Good afternoon, Tiger fans. We are live from Calgar Gym at Trinity University in San Antonio, Texas. We hope you've had a great Thanksgiving weekend and are ready for some more basketball. The undefeated Trinity Tigers are ready to host the Carlton Knights in the final game of the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic. I'm Brian Yenselson, and I'm joined by Luke Terry. Luke, what an offensive outburst we saw here yesterday with the Tigers scoring 108 points in their victory over Birmingham Southern. Yeah, and what a fast-paced game we saw, Brian. The Tigers were only credited with 18 fast break points yesterday, but it felt like all 108 could have been credited. It's gonna be interesting to see how this Carlton team deals with that. They got hot in the first half of yesterday's game against Southwestern, but they slowed down. And it really seemed like there were some tired legs out there. They only ran 11 players out there yesterday and only their third game of the year. Tigers had 23 different players check into the game. So it'll be exciting to watch this one here today. That depth you talked about for the Tigers, something that is a real strength for the Tigers team. 16 different Tigers scoring yesterday. Mentioned those 108 points. That's the most points Trinity has scored in a game since 1992 when they scored 109 against Dallas. First time scoring 100 in regulation since 1999. But we are back and ready to go here as Carlton wins the tip off. And they'll get started this afternoon. Luke Harris running point. Yeah, and Harris, only a freshman out of Piedmont, California, was great in the game yesterday against Southwestern. The offense flows through him up top, but Beckler, who gets an early touch, doesn't find the bottom of the net. It's going to be a huge part of the game today for the Knights. And that first basket of the game going to Beck Page, junior from Longmont, Colorado. Tigers going the other way. Clark finds Seiki underneath, and he's able to put it up and in. Yeah, and Seiki going hard to the basket right there. A nice cut from the big man, Beckler. Played a role in the paint on the defensive end of the court yesterday in that game against Southwestern. He's caught a little bit out of position with his back turned there. And that three is good from Alex Batiste in the corner. Tiss certainly will need to stay hot in this one here today. He led this night's team yesterday with 18 points, but he got cold towards the end of the game against the Pirates here. And Seiki again, the, unable to finish this one. And Luke Harris brings the ball up the court. Trying to beat the zone and Batist able to come in from the corner and get the easy layup. Yeah, that's a lot of what Batiste got earlier on in the game yesterday. There's a lot of ball movement, and Jenkins going to get called for an offensive foul right there. The referee signaling to the table that it was for an off arm used to create some separation down low, but the Knights will get the ball back here, already up 7-2. to two. We saw Birmingham Southern yesterday take an early lead over Trinity, but it did not last long. So we'll see if Carlton can build on what they have so far. And Jeremy Beckler does his part with the mid-range jump shot. Knights up 9-2 to early. Yeah, Brian, one thing to note about the Knights early on here. The Seiki's three is just a little bit long from that left wing. They've done a great job getting back no matter their results on the offensive end of the court. We've seen the ball drop through several times for him here already, but they're hustling back, getting bodies within the three-point line, forcing the Tigers to run set offenses, and they're also knocking down shots. That's another three-pointer that's good. That time, Alex Gibbons from near the top of the key. Yeah, the Knights really on fire to start here. Five of six from the field. Tanner Brown there, though, underneath the basket. Able to complete that one and foul, so he'll go to the line. And just great movement off the ball right there from Tanner Brown. A.J. Clark finding the cutter. Just a little bit of a dump off pass. Tanner Brown, just enough space to get that one up. That one rolled in off the rim. Knocks down the free, knocks down the free throw for the three-point play. 
But as this Knights team continues to get back and pack the paint, note that Tigers weren't spectacular in half-court offense yesterday, but their movement off the ball so great as A.J. Clark with a spectacular behind-the-back save. Seiki in transition goes up and is fouled hard. That's really where the Tigers want to be at, though. Off and running. Feels so comfortable in the open floor. And like you said, spectacular save there from Clark, who had four steals yesterday, two of which led to spectacular dunks. Yeah, Brian, but I certainly agree with you about wanting to be out in transition. And if the Knights are going to find ways to limit it off of makes and misses, then Tigers are going to need to do a good job to get in transition in other ways, stealing the basketball like they did on that possession. Great opportunity to do so. Looked like there was a little bit of an issue with the basketball that was being used. So they'll get a new one into circulation here. See he takes and makes the first free throw. And Enzo Seiki with 15 points last night. He's the leading scorer for this Tigers team, 13.3 points per game. He misses the second of his free throws. So Carlton maintains a 12-6 lead here early on. Tigers going with a little bit more of a press after the night started red hot from the field, trying to shake things up a little bit. And they nearly force another turnover, and they do as that ball goes out of bounds. It'll be Tigers' ball. So a couple of consecutive turnovers now. Hanley blocked there, but Clark gets the offensive rebound. And as he goes up, he's fouled. So the Tigers will be headed back to the free throw line. Yeah, and still not really a set offense being run but a lot of movement out of these guys in the black uniforms today, flying all around the court. And even though Hanley unable to knock down the first attempt, they were there, able to corral an offensive board. And you have to like the end result with A.J. Clark at the free throw line, but a couple of missed free throws here. And this one brings us back to a point that we discussed at large in the game yesterday. Tigers free throw percentage, not exactly where Coach Smith would like it to be on the year to this point. Yeah, and even though Clark only able to make one of two there, Knights don't want to get into foul trouble early. Gibbons already with his second foul, as Batiste unable to get the initial pass there, but he corrals it and brings it in. Clark here to Tanner Brown with his three-point attempt, and it's good. Tanner Brown nails that three-point shot. And the Tigers within four. Just when it looks like Trinity's a little bit out of sorts, that Long pass, a little bit long, but he gets saved. Moved to the corner, swung back around to the outside, and all of a sudden Tanner Brown's knocking down an open three-pointer. And Gibbons trying to strike right back. That one rattles in and out, and then a loose ball foul called. But Tisk, they're trying to get the offensive board. Instead, it'll be another foul against the Knights. That's four team fouls now before the first media timeout. So it's something to keep an eye on. And you can see here as Clark brings it up slowly, the differing styles between Carlton and Birmingham Southern. Yesterday, the Panthers going with the full court press from the get-go. But here, Carlton a lot more conservative with their defensive style and playing back man-to-man -man defense as they try to stop this explosive Trinity offense. And the first stoppage of time will be the first media timeout. Carlton starting off with six of eight from the field, 75% shooting. We'll see if they can keep that up after this quick break on Tiger Network.
Welcome back to Tiger Network. Carlton with an early 14 to 10 lead over Trinity. Enzo Seiki taking the inbounds pass and misses with that shot. Yeah, Seiki in a lot of traffic right there, pinned between two Knights defenders. Kind of just threw that one up there, perhaps, hoping to get the foul call. And Harris there trying to do it himself. Now he passes it out. But a three-second call going against Carlton will negate that shot from Beck Page. And a lot of discussion in the basketball world in recent years about efficiency of shots. A lot of people believing that the three-pointer is better attempt than that mid-range game. Luke Harris had that open look from about 15 feet, passed it up. But I guess it doesn't matter one way or the other, that eventual three-second call in the paint against the Knights. And it's something we saw yesterday, Birmingham going with the mid-range jump, sh jump shot a lot, but like you said, sometimes more efficient to just shoot it from a little bit farther and try the three. Harris does try the three here, but it's no good. Clark with a big rebound there and goes quickly with it. Finds Hanley underneath, and Hanley is fouled. And we'll see who that's on. Gibbons already with two fouls. And he was near that contact. It is, in fact, on Alex Gibbons. So that's three personal fouls on the sophomore from Connecticut. Hanley misses his first free throw. Yeah, and perhaps, Brian, the most unfortunate aspect of that foul, Hanley was a little deep under the basket, not in great position. Perhaps Gibbons pushed him a little further underneath, but either way, have to be smarter. Win left in the game with two fouls. And Hanley able to knock down the second one, and Gibbons with those three fouls, headed to the bench, replaced by Miles Frisch. So the first man off the bench for the Knights. Harris over here to Page. And Frisch, fresh off the bench, unable to knock the three down. Tiger defense early on that possession, very energetic, doing a great job getting to wherever the basketball was swung. But Knights did a good job in that possession, remaining patient. As Tanner Brown with another spectacular cut. Again, same connection. A.J. Clark from the perimeter floats that one down towards the basket. Brown able to finish with that reverse layup. The Tigers all of a sudden within one point. Some nice ball movement here from the Knights around the key. Batiste ends up with it and he steps out of bounds. Referee all over that one. And so the fouls and the turnovers starting to pile up for the Knights. Already four turnovers. The Tigers quietly on a 6-0 run over the past two and a half minutes. This Knights team already a multitude of substitutes that have come into the game. Jenkins attempts that three, knocks it down from that right corner. Tigers pull ahead by two here with 13 and a half left to play in the first half. Jenkins with 17 points himself yesterday. So off to a nice start already. Frisch with another three point attempt. That one goes long, so he's able to get his own rebound. Gets it to the top of the key. Beckler runs into Seiki, and they'll be calling a blocking foul on that one. Yeah, Brian, but back to that previous possession. Jenkins rising up and knocking down that three ball over the top of the defense. Very indicative of him as a player. Absolutely no fear in any circumstance. Seen that out of him a couple of years in a row especially in that spring season when he was honored as the SCAC Player of the Year. It was quite the debut for Jenkins, transfer from Millsaps. First free throw is good there from Beckler. The first point for Carlton in over four minutes. So after that red hot start, especially from beyond the three point line, they quieted down a little bit. This Tiger defense really clamping down and now off the missed free throw. Out in the open floor, Jenkins fakes the three, takes it all the way to the basket and over Frisch for the layup. 
So nice little hesitation at the top of the key. Jenkins allowing him to get past Frisch and to the basket. The Tiger is on top. See Bradley there handling the ball. He's in off the bench. And he's unable to corral that one. Goes right through his hands. Turnover number five for the Knights. And momentum really starting to fully swing Trinity's way. The Tiger bench really starting to get into it, make some noise. And Clark able to split the two defenders there, gets it to Brown. Jenkins once again getting to the basket. And as he goes up, he's fouled by Lee, who keeps his hands up still, trying to say he went straight up, but the foul will be called. And again, Jenkins really forcing the action. Really getting involved in the last couple of minutes. Saw him knock down that three-pointer, pull the Tigers ahead. Nice drive to the basket a couple of times down the court ago. And again, getting into the painted area, recognizing the defender out of position gets to the free throw line for a couple of attempts. And on that replay, you could see Lee might have gone straight up, but he was clearly in the restricted area, so doesn't really matter at that point. Results in the foul and the two free throw attempts for Jenkins. And he knocks down both of them. So ever since the Tigers went to this press, they've forced five turnovers for the Knights. And they've gone on a 13 to one run over the last four minutes. And it'll continue here as Brown now running with space. He gets it to Jenkins. And Seiki to Brown with another cut to the basket. Everything working now for the Tigers as they continue this long run, 15 to one over the last four and a half minutes. Bradley trying to find anyone to get it to. He finds Beckler. And the cutter from the corner, that's Banovitz. And he's fouled as he goes up. Yeah, but the last couple times down the court, now looks like a technical being assessed, perhaps. That will be the case. Enzo Seiki, I believe, being called for the block on that last play. Also assessed the technical foul. Hasn't been the happiest with the referees earlier on in this one. That'll be foul number three on Seiki, so perhaps why he's upset. A couple of close calls as he's trying to draw the charge. But that one goes against him, so Miles Frisch at the line. And he's unable to connect on his first technical free throw, but he'll get a second. Some Tiger parents making some noise here on the technical foul. But Frisch able to hit that second one. But we see Seiki now headed to the bench and he'll be replaced by David Nickel. And a couple of more Tiger replacements who we'll see after this timeout as we are under 12 minutes. So we'll take a quick media timeout and be right back on Tiger Network.
Welcome back to Tiger Network. Trinity with a 22 to 16 lead over Carlton. Carlton, no field goals in nearly five minutes, but they're at the free throw line. There it's Banovitz with the first free throw after the technical foul was called on Trinity. Before the break, we saw Enzo Seiki with his third personal foul. So he's on the bench now, replaced by David Nickel, number 33 there. And he's joined by Jacob Harvey off the bench along with three Tiger starters. And Harvey right away with the three, but that one air mails over the basket. Yeah, Brian, and before all of that action that occurred before the break, I was trying to touch on this Knights team return to playing Playing through Beckler out of the middle, you see the same thing there again. Beckler in yesterday's action and past couple down, past couple times down the court has shown his ability as a passer, but also has shown some really great mobility and footwork, able to shoot the mid range. Seen that earlier on in this one, but also able to find his way all the way to the rim and finish there with skill. And Nickel trying to do the same on the other end, but he comes up just short on that one. So Harris brings it back up the court. And Beckler right there setting up once again in the middle. Got to keep an eye on how long he is in the paint, though. We already saw one three-second called on Carlton. Harris to Page, and there's Beckler once again in the middle, and he gets it out to Banovitz, who nails the three-point shot. So some good ball movement there from Carlton, going through Beckler, who has scored in the middle of the key, and then passing it out to his three-point shooters. Carlton retakes the lead, 23 to 22. Clark now directing traffic. Hands it off to Brown and takes it himself now for three and drills it. Some great back and forth action here. Basketball always touted as a game of runs. AJ Clark stops an 8-0-1 that Carlton had going after the Trinity Tigers had pulled ahead 22 to 17 earlier on. A couple more Tiger substitutions on the way. You see Griffin Levine, Abdullah Roberts, and Ashton Owens. So now all five men on the floor for the Tigers coming off the bench. Meanwhile, Carlton mostly with their starters on the court. And there's Batiste with the three-point attempt, rattles in and out. Offensive rebound. Page now back to Harris. And Page takes a three of his own off the front of the rim. Rebound by Nickel. Ashton Owens now coming up the other side of the court. Slows it down a little bit as Carlton gets back on defense. Levine now handling, going up against the taller Beckler. Gets it to Nickel just short, but able to get his own miss and puts it right back up for the two points. Page gets it to Batiste, who's done a great job cutting from the corner, but rejected there. Now Harvey, two on two, gets it to Levine, open for three. But he's going to be called for a traveling violation. So the pace has really picked up here as both teams doing a great job offensively. Carlton shooting 47% from the field, Trinity 52.9. Beckler finds Batiste under the basket, and he gets it up over Levine and Nickel for a two. So like Batiste continues to, to cut in from the corner, and we've seen how dangerous he is with the three, so have to guard that, but then that allows him to cut in. But on the other end, Abdullah Roberts with the two. This Tiger team, it's interesting to see how the offense flows with this group of players on the court similar to what we saw yesterday. Another turnover caused by the Tigers. Owens lobs it up to Roberts, who saves it, gets it to Nickel, who completes that fast break scenario. The Tigers doing such a great job with that yesterday. A foul called here early in the possession, but the Tigers, a 25 to six advantage on fast break points yesterday. They're already wanting to run, as we've talked so much about, but when you provide them that little spark, there's just no looking back for them as they're in the open court. That last foul called on Nickel.
Beckler again able to find Batiste, who is fouled, but they're going to say the basket is no good. Just a foul on the floor. Yeah, a lot of contact coming between Batiste and Abdullah Roberts down in the post right there. Not something that we saw a whole lot yesterday on the call. Batiste shine away from contact a little bit in his matchup against the Southwestern Pirates. And there once again, Beckler just spots up in the paint. A short mid-range jump, jump shot. So we've seen him do a couple of things when he gets in the middle of that zone. He can pull up or he can find the cutting man from the corner as Nickel once again goes up that six points now for Nickel, who came in after Seiki collected three early fouls, but David Nickel has done a great job off the bench for the Tigers. Now a traveling call on the Knights. So the Tigers will get the ball right back. And just like that, we're once again under the media timeout. Seven and a half minutes left here in San Antonio. Trinity up 33 to 27. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Tigers with a six point lead here just over halfway through the first half. And Levine spots up off the screen. No good on the three point attempt and Harris with the rebound. Tigers had made their last four shots before that Levine miss. Harris trying to find someone but left all alone at the top of the key so he nails the three pointer on his own looking for any teammates around, but says why not take it himself, so he does. But quickly off of the made basket, Harvey for the Tigers puts it up for the easy layup. Yeah, and it looked like Harvey fumbled that one down around his waist, so forced to hang in the air a little bit longer, but helped him out a little bit in the long run as he got around the defender. And Harris trying to get two in a row but unable to connect, and there Batiste with the hook shot, no good. And the Tigers so quickly getting to the other end of the court, and Owens going up and getting fouled. And you can see where the frustration can come for an opponent facing this Trinity team. You make a three in Harris, and you think, okay, that's a nice little momentum boost. And then you turn around, and Harvey's already on the other end of the court with an easy layup. Just no ability to let your guard down against these Tigers. Yeah, and I think it's something that we saw in that game with Birmingham Southern yesterday, Brian. Defenders have done a, a decent job getting back. They're running side by side, and they've been on the hip of these Tigers when they've been on offense, but that's an advantage for this Trinity team. They're comfortable going up towards the glass with the defenders on the hip, and more often than not, it results in a foul call. These Knights need to do a better job of getting all the way back and establishing guarding position, getting in front of these players in black jerseys here today. Harris for his second was stuck there behind in the backcourt, but able to get it across, but only 11 seconds left on the shot clock, so he'll put it up and goes everything but in. So Harris with a couple of three-point attempts here, only one has gone in. Harvey on the other end, swishes it from the top of the key. A quick 7-0 run for these Tigers. Harvey with five points off the bench. He's the leading scorer off the bench for the Tigers, averaging 10 points this season. But Batiste responds with a three of his own. 
So lots of back and forth here between the Knights and the Tigers. We'll get a timeout. So you get a look at this replay. Harvey in rhythm. The assist there from Levine doing a nice job finding him. And that other corner, Batiste, hitting this three, leaning in to catch it, having to step back and a little bit of a fade on that one, but knocks it down nonetheless. Important for this Carlton team to continue taking three-pointers, trying to keep this Tiger defense honest. Talked about Luke Harris, just taking a couple of attempts recently from the top of the key. One for four on the day, but he especially needs to keep taking and hopefully see some fall through. Only took two in yesterday's action against Southwestern, but if he can find a way to knock some more down, it might disrupt this Tiger defense, force them to bring out something new. And Batiste, the senior from Maple Grove, Minnesota, must be really feeling comfortable here in San Antonio as he lists two of his favorite athletes as Tim Duncan and David Robinson. So some Spurs idols for Batiste, and he's doing a great job after scoring 18 in yesterday's game, already 12, leading all scorers this afternoon. Nickel left open for a second, now left with the underman Batiste. But the Knights able to swarm. That's Matt Weifels who gets the steal. Yeah, Batiste now really working well on both ends of the court. We'll see him utilized in that same position that Beckler was earlier in this half. At the top of the key, that free throw line area. Shot clock down to five. So Harris this time puts it up and in. Second time in the past minute or so, we've seen Harris force it up at the end of the shot clock. But again, off of a May 3, Carlton unable to get back defensively. Levine that time cutting to the basket. Yeah, and Levine operating right there with just a full head of steam. Takes that one the length of the court. These Knights defenders standing a little flat-footed. And Frisch takes that one from the left wing a little bit long. Ashen Owens will bring that one the other way. Just like that, Tigers have the advantage. Harvey trying to get another quick three, but that one just misses. But ever since that first couple of minutes for the Knights where they led by seven, unable to really put baskets and stops together, they're still shooting incredibly well, 50% from the field. And this time, Batiste, like you said, operating like Beckler was doing. The first one rejected, but then put up for the points there. Weifels missing the first one. But the Knights doing a great job recovering, so they're down just four. The three by Roberts, no good. Yeah, not a whole lot of offensive action for the Tigers right there. Veen denied the handoff. Gave it up to Roberts the second time. and Seemed like a little bit of settle on that possession with the long three from the wing. A lot of patience being shown by these Knights and it pays off that time as Matt Banovitz nails the three-pointer. Knights within one. Just over three minutes left in this first half. Both teams continue to shoot well over 50% for both the Tigers and the Knights. We'll see who takes the lead into the locker room as Owens, Harvey, excuse me, gets it to Nickel, but unable to get that one. Tried to go underneath the basket. For the last couple of times down the court, Knights have done a much better job defensively. They've gotten a bunch of bodies inside that three-point line, and they've stayed in front of the Tigers. The Tigers really looking for some lanes to get to the basket and attack offensively but we're not seeing the movement off the ball. The cutters aren't there for Trinity right now. It's been a lot of ball, hander, ball handler primarily trying to get to the basket himself. And when he hasn't been able to, the Tigers have pulled up from deep and they haven't found the bottom of the basket. Second foul called on David Nickel as Batiste setting up as he and Beckler have done so often today right there in the middle of the zone. That takes us to our final media timeout of the first half. We'll take a quick break and be right back on Tiger Network.
Welcome back to Tiger Network. Alex Batiste at the line with a chance to tie this game up, and he does, nailing the first of the one and one. A 6-0 run here for Carlton over the last minute, and even beyond that, a 12-2 run over the past three minutes has gotten them right back into this game. Tigers haven't scored in the last two minutes and six seconds. We'll see if they can get things going again. A couple of starters back in, Caleb Jenkins, A.J. Clark, and Tanner Brown. They're joined by Braxton Berry and Jack Williams. Jenkins with the jump shot there, fouled as he goes up, so he'll get back to the line. Yeah, Brian, you look up after Batiste knocks down both of those free throws, and all of a sudden the Knights are up 43-42. Comes as a surprise, wondering if you feel the same way. After Trinity pulled ahead, you know, earlier on, 22-17 to in this one, felt like they were really in control for pretty much the majority of this half until we reach this point, and then all of a sudden you recognize that Carlton's ahead in this one. Clark with the steal, and here we go again with the dunk. Almost as if we're replaying yesterday. Clark doing such a great job taking the ball away from Carlton there. And once he's alone, there's just no stopping him. And the Tigers really ramping up the pressure that we had seen early in this first half that had gone away. They're swarming right now defensively. And Knights a little bit out of sorts, but they get it back to the man who's been their go-to to this point. But a sloppy inbounds pass there, and Batiste able to get it and go to the rim. No good, but fouled. And the Tigers just trying to move a little bit too quickly on that inbounds, wanting to push in transition. You see the replay, AJ Clark, another left-handed flush. Time to sign him up for the dunk contest, Luke. I know, what a show in pre-game warm-ups. So many of these guys showing off their athleticism here today. Both free throws no good from Batiste, but a great job there by Getz tapping that out and the Knights retain possession. Great hustle gets seemingly coming from nowhere off of the missed free throw. And Batiste trying to direct traffic from the center of the zone, and he gets it out to Frisch, who attempts the three-pointer, but it's no good. And now Clark on the other end. Yeah, Brian. Going up on Beckler. Spins. Lots of action there. Ball goes out of bounds, will remain with the Tigers. Yeah, Brian, that last time down the court, you mentioned gets his name as he tapped that one back out. The, not, the Knights could end up with that offensive rebound. He was a name that we mentioned a lot in yesterday's action. So AJ Clark finds another cutter going to the rim there. That's Braxton Berry who will head to the free throw line now. But Getz in yesterday's action against Southwestern, not the most impressive stat line. He played 19 minutes. He didn't come away with any points, just two rebounds. He actually had more personal fouls than anything on the day, but he finished as the leader in plus minus. You can't get that number right now, but I believe it was around that plus 16 mark. So obviously making an impact on both ends of the court would be important here for the Pirates, excuse me, for the Knights today. And just like we saw on the other end, two missed free throws for the Tigers this time, but they get the offensive rebound and the three point attempt. It's no good, bodies all over the floor. Frisch putting up the three but he's called for a travel before he got it up. So a little bit of sloppy play from both teams at the end of this first half. They've both played so well. Something that we saw a couple of times yesterday, another flopping warning being assessed. This one going to Caleb Jenkins. We saw him go down in this near side corner after he took that three point attempt. And it looked like perhaps the Carlton defender, defender came underneath him in his landing area. The refs not feeling the same way. And the official currently at the scorer's table trying to figure something out.
Not quite sure what he was looking at, but it'll be Tigers ball with a minute left in the first half. AJ Clark taking it up. Carlton leads 45 to 44. Clark finds Williams in the corner, goes up and hits the three. Nice job there from Clark, finding Williams all alone in the corner. Yeah, exactly my point, Brian. Clark looked the defender off, looked to whoever was standing on the wing, made the no-look pass to Williams in the corner who had the open three because of it. He did his job knocking it down, giving the Tigers a two-point lead. And the crowd making some noise here as the half comes to an end. The ball's loose, Batiste rejected by Barry. It goes out to Harris, and he's able to drain the three. Somehow, Harris ends up with the ball at the end of that possession, and he puts Carlton right back up. Just six seconds left in the first half. Clark to the basket, gets it to go. The clock will run out here on the first half. Tigers taking a 49 to 48 lead to the half. What a first half we had here. Both teams putting on respective runs that got them back into this game after they were both down by healthy deficits, but should be a great second half. Don't go anywhere, just a 15 minute halftime goes by in a flash. Make sure to do what you need to do and be right back here with us on Tiger Network for the second half.
Welcome back, Tiger fans. We are back for the second half of the final game of the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic here between the Trinity Tigers and the Carleton College Knights. A great first half back and forth action here, both squads resulting in a Trinity lead by just one. So coming out of the locker room, we'll see what adjustments both teams make. Tanner Brown fakes the three. Takes a shorter mid-range shot, but short. Yeah, it looks like that one came out of his hand a little bit late. Shot on the way down. Hard to get enough on attempts like those. Seiki falls to the court there. Doesn't get the charge call, but also important that not called for a foul himself. Remind those of you at home that Seiki playing currently with three fouls. Earned that third one early on in the first half and sat on the bench for a long while. Absolutely, Luke, and we'll have to keep an eye on if the Knights really attack Seiki. His absence was felt there at the end of the first half. So he'll have to do his best to stay in there. Batiste in the corner, and he hits the three. So a great start to the second half for Batiste just as he finished the first half. Now up to 18 points. The senior had 18 points yesterday, so already at that total here today, having a great afternoon in San Antonio. Now trying to defend Seiki on the other end. Seiki takes him down with the nice little hook shot. Good for Seiki to get going there on the offensive end, see if he can find some rhythm, help this Tiger team out. But for Batiste, you mentioned he's matched his scoring total that he had yesterday, but been significantly more impressive in this one. It's shown a little bit of everything on the offensive side of the court as that one swung to Beck Page on the left side, and he also knocks down the three-point shot. So just as they started the first half here, starting the second half on fire from three, Seiki trying to respond, and he does. So Enzo Seiki, the leading scorer for the Tigers this season, averaging 13 points a game. Starts off this second half on fire with five quick points. Tiger is down by two in a quick timeout here. Gives us some time to look at the box score a little bit closer. You can see just how even we are. Both teams shooting at about the same percentage, both from three and from the field. The free throw percentage, both teams would like that much higher. But a, a spot that we talked a lot about yesterday, and I'm sure Coach Smith is very happy with, just three turnovers for the Tigers. They average about 16 per game, and they have really emphasized trying to cut those down as these Tigers love to run quickly and run such a fast-paced offense that they have understood that turnovers come with that style of play. But they've continued to improve, and if they can keep that number around that area, I think they're going to be very pleased if they can keep that up through the second half. Absolutely. Another big disparity worth mentioning is those rebounding numbers. Carlton side holds the edge 24 to 14. That includes eight offensive rebounds as opposed to just four for this Trinity side. The Knights have taken advantage of those. They have eight second chance points on the day, so certainly something that Trinity will look to stop and control in this second half. Gibbons right now with the ball. He himself has three fouls as well and was out early in the first half. So the Knights happy to have him back. Batiste there. Unable to connect and now a technical foul. I believe the technical foul is being called on head coach Guy Calland. Tanner Brown at the line missed his first free throw. He knocks down the second one. That replay didn't seem as if coach Calland was very animated on that sideline. So I have to wonder from all the way up here in the press box, what specifically was said to the referee. If they have a conversation and the ball is put back into play. Trinity trailing by one here, under 18 minutes left here in the second half. Jenkins able to deal with the contact, gets it in and will get the three-point play opportunity. 
And I think you're right on the replay just before that, Coach Callum didn't look super animated, but you've been able to tell from up here that they haven't been happy with several of the calls that have put their team in foul trouble, especially early on in that first half. And Coach Callen has been around for a while. This is his 38th season leading the Carlton Knights. A team from the MIAC, the Minnesota Intercollegiate Athletic Conference, coming down to spend a November afternoon in San Antonio, Texas. Just one of three games that they'll play all year outside the state of Minnesota. One today here against Trinity, one yesterday also in San Antonio, and they'll play one more game against Aurora in Illinois, but that will be it. They will stay in their state of Minnesota for the rest of the season. So a fun trip for these guys to get to spend the holiday weekend in Texas. Yeah, certainly catch a little bit of a break with the weather down here in San Antonio. I don't know, it's pretty cold today. Guess not Minnesota cold, but San Antonio cold. About 47 degrees, cold and rainy. Hanley goes up to get that rebound off the Gibbons miss and he takes it. Batiso doing a good job stopping him, forcing the Tigers to back out into their half court offense. Tanner Brown with the great spin move and lays it up. Great Brown. footwork there. Typically the benefactor of some great cuts and great passes from his teammates, but shows his skill right there in the half court set, getting to the basket all by himself in that isolation. But soon as we can say that, talk about that Tiger score, back down the other way, Knights knock down that mid-range jump shot. And Clark denied there on the quick opportunity. So Harris dribbles it right back up for the Knights. And Bleck Beckler has done really an excellent job using all the space that's being given to him in the middle of the zone that these Tigers have used all game long. And Seiki taking it right in the heart of this Carlton defense. He's up to double digits now. Seiki with seven points in this half alone. And you can see it, two Carlton defenders there, Gibbons and Beckler. But Seiki, some nice footwork to get to the basket and give Trinity a four point lead. Just under the 16 minute mark, first media timeout of the second half. We'll take a quick break and be right back on Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network and to San Antonio where it is officially 51 degrees compared to 37 in Northfield, Minnesota where these Carlton Knights hail from. So pretty comparable if you ask me. Thankfully we're inside Calgar Gym for this final game, the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic. Tigers looking to remain undefeated on the season have started 6-0, Carlton. 2-1, and one. this is just their fourth game. They lost their season opener to Bethany Lutheran before consecutive victories over Concordia Moorhead and Southwestern yesterday here in Calgar Gym. Tigers really putting a lot of pressure now out of this timeout, but a couple of fouls in a row called on just the inbounds pass. So this will be the third attempt for the Knights to get it in here.
Clark and Jenkins double teaming Harris, nearly forcing the steal, but able to get it to Page and to Gibbons across half court. So the Knights break that press, now able to set up their offense. Offensive foul called on Carlton. Take a look at the replay right here. Foul called on number 43, Spencer Getz there, who is trying to set the off-ball screen. Yeah, I'm sure the ref calling that for some movement by Getz, perhaps being moved by Caleb Jenkins, but I think either way, the screen being set a little bit too early. So that looked like there was a double screen action up top for the ball handler. And the ball handler hadn't even taken advantage of the first one yet by the time Getz was on top of the defender. On that last possession, first turnover of the second half by Jenkins as he was just trying to make something happen underneath the basket. Knights unable to capitalize and almost got it back there, but the deflection goes out of bounds. It'll stay with the Tigers. Tigers yesterday had four of their starters in double digits and they already have three in that double digit column. Tanner Brown leading the way with 13 points. Enzo Seiki and Caleb Jenkins with 10. And Seiki making 10-12 with that nice basket off the connection from Clark. Yeah, and Seiki already with nine points here in the second half, leading the way for the Tigers. Such a strong start after spending so much time on the bench in the first half in foul trouble. Page trying to make something happen, finds Frisch, gets it to Batiste, shot clock at three, Batiste puts it up, and it's off the rim, no good. Now Brown looking to run, but deflected, and some contact there at center court. But play keeps on going, Jenkins still struggling to get up. Now the official stops play for a second to check on Caleb Jenkins. Kind of a strange play there. Yeah. A loose ball, definitely inadvertent contact both ways. Obviously, Jenkins takes the, the brunt of that hit. But nice to see him up and around after that stoppage of play. Clark goes around the screen and up over Harris. My goodness, what a dunk from A.J. Clark. Caleb Jenkins runs back down the court with his hands on his head because I assure you no one in this gym expected that. We've seen A.J. Clark get up in transition, but this little hesitation move to get by the defender, and he just rises up over the top. Poor Alex Harris is now on a poster. So the dunk count for this weekend up to four for Clark, but like you said, the first three were obvious ones with no one in front of him in the open floor. But that one over Harris, the first year from Piedmont, California, will be seen over and over here in San Antonio now. Just an incredible play from Clark. But as Harris goes to the line, Enzo Seiki collecting his fourth foul. So after all the excitement of the dunk, Seiki back to the bench with four fouls. Tigers are trying to make some action without him as they're up nine, their biggest lead in quite a while. Yeah, and it feels like that dunk, emphatic one, provided a little bit of a spark for the Tigers. Beckler, a nice take right there. We talked about him earlier in the broadcast. A very, very skilled offensive player. Seen him catch the ball in this area a ton, but enough finesse to get the one over the top, high off the backboard outside of that square that we see utilized so often. Marquez with pretty solid defense there, perhaps a little bit too invasive. And in the first half, when Seiki got into foul trouble, we saw David Nickel come off the bench. Early on here in the second period, though, we've seen Marquez now trying to take the load off of Seiki. 
Marquez, the only player off the bench currently in with four other starters. Tigers up by six now. And Clark, who clearly has put everyone on dunk alert, gets it to Jenkins. Some nice dribbling action, fouled, and count the basket. Now some really great back and forth play. Saw Jenkins get called for an off arm earlier in this one, but not enough there to warrant a call, and Jenkins will head to the free throw line. Jenkins unable to complete the three-point play. But the energy in this gym definitely picking up. Fans making some noise on both sides. As Beckler's jump shot no good, but the Knights get the offensive rebound. Then a foul called on Trinity. Second foul on Marquez quickly, just a couple of minutes in the game. So the Knights really trying to take advantage of Seiki's absence. We'll see if they can get it there. Gibbons with the three from the top of the key. We've seen Harris from there a couple of times. Now Gibbons, and he knocks that one down. Trying to keep Carlton within decent range, and now an offensive foul going to be called on Trinity. The call we saw earlier in the half go against Carlton on the screen of Marquez. See if we can get a replay for you here. Earlier in the game, that call going against Carlton. A little bit of movement from the screener. Sure that that's exactly what happened right there from Marquez. As he, number 40, sets up at the free throw line. Yeah, and a little bit of movement, but I don't know especially on an off-ball screen being set. Not sure that should warrant a call. In my opinion, it shouldn't. Nonetheless, Marquez with three personal fouls now in a matter of moments, and Beckler going right at him again. Unable to get that one down, though. But you can see the emphasis. The Knights really trying to attack Marquez. Beckler certainly frustrated with that call. He'll be called going over the back. Referee signal to the table with a push, but if I miss that, it looked like Beckler grabbed that one out of the air pretty cleanly. Now Clark and the Tigers going the other way. He spots up for a three just short, but the long rebound gets right to Clark. Finds the open man there for the three. That's Jacob Milhouse off the bench. With the big three, lead back up to eight. Beckler now in the corner, and he's fouled as he shoots by Littman. First we've seen of Beckler beyond the three-point arc. And now he'll get three free throws. But on this replay, you see Milhouse open as Clark drawing so much attention and taking full advantage of that one. Media timeout here under 12 minutes. Trinity up 73 to 65. We'll be right back after a quick break on Tiger Network. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Trinity 
have hit six of their last seven shots, but Jeremy Beckler at the line for Carlton, trying to cut into this eight-point deficit that they face. He'll have three free throw attempts after this discussion that the referees are having with head coach Guy Calland. Yeah, Brian, and before we took that time out, you mentioned that Beckler took that first attempt from three-point range in the corner. Yesterday we saw four attempts out of him, three of them coming in the second half against Southwestern. And while he didn't convert on any of those in that game yesterday, all three of those at the top of the key rimmed in and out. So it's another part of his game that Tigers certainly will need to look out for as this one comes down the stretch. First two free throws good for Beckler. He's up to 14 points, second best on this Carlton team. Now to wipe the floor, something we've seen a couple of times here today. Guy slipping back and forth. For the Knights, it's Alex Batiste leading the way with 21 points, followed by Beckler with 14. Harris and Banovitz adding 10 of their own. And Beckler takes advantage of all three free throws, bringing it back down to within five. We'll see what these Tigers do. A.J. Clark, the lone starter out there for Trinity. He has the ball currently joined by Griffin Levine, who he gets the ball off to. Spots up for the jumper, just short, but rebounded by Jordan Littman. Littman gets it out to Clark, spots up for the three. No good, but another offensive rebound by Milhouse, who finds Marquez. Puts it up for the layup. Great second and third chances for the Tigers. And a great pass from Milhouse right there underneath the basket. Looked like he had his head turned out towards the three-point line. Was pulling the defenders in that direction. Marquez waiting for him at that opposite block. Delivered that nice pass on the money. Marquez straight up for the finish to extend the Tiger lead to seven. One and one opportunity here for Brad Lee. And he misses the front end, Marquez with the rebound. Clark gets it to Lippman, the cross court pass. Lippman provided a real spark of energy yesterday, six points off the bench. Levine to Marquez, up with the shot. Another offensive rebound though, Marquez getting his own miss. And then Littman getting the rebound, fighting for the ball, ends up in the hands of Frisch. But the Tigers fighting for every ball there. Frisch gets it to Gibbons, unable to connect on that one. Littman takes Frisch, goes around. Knights all over the floor, get the ball. Just recovered, coming from behind on that play. Got on top of Littman right there with the block. That ball will go out of bounds. Go to Trinity. But great hustle from both sides, diving on the floor, trying to get every loose ball. Last several, though, going to the Tigers, especially as they crash the offensive glass. They're now up to nine offensive rebounds. They had four at the half. So really putting up an effort, even on these missed shots, not giving up, getting second opportunities. And there goes Clark again, but he'll be called for a travel. He cannot believe it. You will see on the replay right here. Picks up his dribble, takes two steps, and gets to the rim. Tough to tell there. And it looked like the referee had his vision blocked from where he was set up on the court. But the Knights make the Tigers pay. That's Batiste with another three-pointer. He knocks that one down in this right corner that he's been very fond of all game long.
Clark now going up against Batist. Milhouse gets it to Nickel, newly in the game. And Nickel goes up over Beckler for the two points. Nickel had a productive first half coming in for Seiki. Now up to eight points, but they're committing the foul and the basket will count. The first year, Harris going all the way to the basket and Nickel being called for the foul there at the end. Yeah, and Harris has been really impressive today. Was the unfortunate recipient of a poster courtesy of A.J. Clark, but outside of that has been really, really great. Freshman's knocked down a couple of three-pointers on the outside. He's also gotten to the basket well. And now the Knights getting offensive rebounds themselves. Two on this possession. Page gets it to Batiste under the basket, and he completes that third chance that the Knights were given. Carlton down just two here, eight and a half minutes left. Trinity trying to maintain their 6-0 record. Carlton 2-1 coming into today. Trying to beat the Tigers on their home floor. Nickel saves that one, but it goes right to Harris. And Carlton with a chance to tie or take the lead here. Pass from Gibbons deflected and taken by Littman. He's telling Clark to run. Littman gets it to Levine, over to Milhouse for the three. Great ball movement on the outside. Levine, ball stuck in his hands for just a second, pulling the defender out towards him, but it left Milhouse wide open for that corner three. He does his job to knock it down. Page in some no man's land, trying to dribble in the teeth of this Tiger defense. Harris able to get it though. Gibbons fouled as he goes up and the basket will count. The shot clock was running out there. Harris with that nice dump off pass around David Nickel. Just squeaks that one in there in front of Lippman. Lippman behind Alex Gibbons right there, commits the foul. So Carlton will have a free throw attempt after this media timeout. We'll take a quick break. A good one on our hands here in San Antonio. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to Tiger Network. Something that stands out to Luke and I and viewers at home if you're looking at that on-screen graphic. These teams not doing well from the free throw line. Carlton shooting just 61%, Trinity 55%. But get ready to see a lot more of these free throw attempts as Carlton already in the double bonus. 11 fouls committed by Trinity this half. And so the final seven minutes, any foul committed by the Tigers will send the Knights to the line for two. Gibbons was able to complete his three-point play there, so the Knights down by just two. Well, Levine over to Brown. The three is no good. Familiar faces back on the court now for the Tigers, one of them being Enzo Seiki playing in this one. A lot of time left on the clock. This has four fouls at the moment. Banovitz puts up the three and drills it. Carlton takes the lead 81 to 80. Go, go, go. 
Millhouse over to Hanley, trying to take it to Batiste. And a foul called. Foul will go on Alex Batiste. See the replay of it right here. Some calling for a travel, but Hanley does a good job to stop his momentum. Let the defender blow by him. He has an open attempt at the basket, except the defender reached back to hit him on the arm to hit the free throw line. First of two shots is good. No good on the second free throw, so this remains a tie ball game. 81 all. Gibbons fakes the three, goes to Seiki, and will that be, that's a charge. Very risky play there. Seiki playing with four fouls. See him right here step out. That left foot moving just a little bit, but it looked like Seiki was set in that spot nonetheless before the offensive player took off. So I think it's a good call by the referees right there. Trinity will get the ball back. Just over six minutes remaining, all tied up 81. Pass from Jenkins deflected and taken away. Trying to get the ball to Seiki there in the post, but it's taken away from the Knights. Harris to Banovitz once again trying to hit the big three, but this one no good. Tigers off and running. Brown taking it past Gibbons and goes up for the layup. Tanner Brown now with 15 points. Leads the Tigers after a career high in assists and rebounds yesterday. Doing it on the offensive end, scoring himself. And he's been so impressive with the ball in his hands today. Gets to the basket so easily. Oh, some contact there. Jenkins trying to get in the middle of the pass. We'll see Tanner Brown, that replay, splitting the two defenders. Almost want to call him slippery in the open court. Some great words to describe the play of Tanner Brown. First free throw there from Benevitz, good. As we mentioned, the Knights will be going to the line even if these fouls are away from the basket. And Benevitz takes full advantage, ties his game up at 83. Seiki trying to get the ball, posting up on Benevitz. Jenkins, no good on that one. There's a nice move from Jenkins against the first year, Luke Harris. That spin move, he found himself a little too far underneath the basket. Maybe forced that one. Back on the other end, Beckler with the nice finish up and under to give the Knights the advantage. Hanley gets it to Seiki. Blocking foul called. Referees will have a discussion. They counted the basket originally. But I think they'll head to the monitor more than likely to review that one. Yeah, because it looks like the foul called on Batiste as Hanley was going. But then Hanley with the pass to Seiki who ended up making the shot. So will they give... Seiki the basket. Yeah, and it looks like that contact between Batiste and Hanley occurs before Seiki goes up into his shooting motion, but the referee will go to the table here. Gives them the signal that it's on Batiste, but no indication that the basket would count right there, and we see that Hanley is at the free throw line now. Will not be a shooting foul, however. The Tigers only in the one and one.
first one's good from Hanley. Those front ends of the one and one so important. Every free throw matters, but getting the opportunity for the second one in these close games, so crucial, and Hanley knocks down both of them. Yeah, Brian, you're exactly right. Something that you don't see in the box score, missing that front end of the one and one, it's practically like missing two free throws because you cheat yourself out of the opportunity for that second one. Harris over to Banovitz for the three, short, but Batis goes up, gets the rebound, and the shot goes just out of the basket and the foul called as the Tigers were going up the court on the other end. So that one just going out. Fourth foul on Batiste. So now he has to be careful along with Seiki for the Tigers. And Batiste the leading scorer on both teams with 26. Brown knocks down that front end of the one and one. Tigers taking the lead. And Brown hits both. Tigers up over 61% from the line. Four minutes left here in San Antonio. Tigers up 87 to 85. Beckler out to Harris, Banovitz gives up his dribble, Page now is fouled. Jenkins, the aggressor there again, the call will go against him and well you have to love the effort, the Tigers need the presence of mind to understand that any foul at this point in the game is going to send the Knights to the line for two shots. Talked about Jenkins' aggression earlier on in this game and how it really pays off on the offensive end of the court, but he's someone that over his time here at Trinity has found himself in foul trouble quite a bit early on in the season. The team leader in average fouls per game, so certainly something to keep an eye on as the season continues. Someone that you certainly want on the court with all of his offensive weapons. Jenkins does join Seiki now with four personal fouls, so just one away from being fouled out. But this game between two high-flying offenses that have gone on long runs throughout this game and have put up some great numbers from the field will more than likely decide this game from the free throw line in these last four minutes. Both teams headed towards double-digit fouls. Carlton with nine. Trinity with 13, that means Carlton's already in the double bonus. Trinity right on the doorstep. Right now out of this timeout, it'll be Beck Page from the line. Yeah, Brian, you, you talked a couple breaks ago about the free throw shooting percentages overall on the game. Not great for either team, but they've both been much improved in this second half for Carlton, eight of 11 from the line. Make that now 9 of 12, and for the Tigers, 7 of 10. So they've been really, really good when it's mattered the most today. And Page continues that trend as he ties this game up now with two free throws. Starters out there for the Tigers, joined by Jacob Harvey and Tanner Brown. Nearly gets that one to go, but he is fouled, and he'll head to the line once again. So Brown, someone we're used to seeing shoot from beyond the three-point arc, but he's really taking advantage and getting to the middle of this Carlton defense, getting to the basket with ease. And it's resulted in all these free throw attempts. That one no good. Brown, four of six from the line today. And he misses both there. So a break for Carlton. Oh, 
Beckler on Seiki, able to get it up and over him. Carlton takes the lead. Seiki right back the other way. But he's unable to connect, and Carlton regains possession. Looked like there was a little bit of contact from the hip, from the hip of Beckler on Seiki on that last attempt. Coming back down this way, Beckler found at that high post a great pass underneath to Batiste. Give him two more points on the day. Now he has 28. Again, leading all scorers. Been huge in this one. A foul will be called on Banovitz as he tries to get that loose ball. That ball nearly getting away from the Tigers. Lucky to get it back and headed to the free throw line. Brown just missed a pair, but he gets another chance. Tigers officially in the double bonus now, so two free throws the rest of the way. A 6-0 run for Carlton over the last minute 25. And for Trinity, no field goals in over three minutes, so not the time to go cold if you're Trinity. They still have two minutes and 22 seconds left. Brown connects on that first one. But on the other end, Carlton really finding a formula that works, getting the ball to Beckler in the middle of the zone, and he can either go up with the shot himself or ha he has often found Batiste cutting from the corner. Beckler with 19 points and five assists. Brown, though, able to knock down both free throws. Lead down to two for Carlton. With that last break, while the Tigers at the free throw line, Abdullah Roberts checked back into the game. Give them a little bit more length on this side of the court. That's Luke Harris getting all the way to the basket in yesterday's game against Southwestern. His play was huge down the end of the game. He hit a layup up and under as Enzo Seiki comes back down the court through contact, gets that one in off the glass. Some great back and forth action between these two teams now. And both teams going to the basket, not relying on the jump shots, trying to take it straight to the rim and it's working for both teams. Beckler again there and a foul gonna be called on Roberts on the floor, but it doesn't matter. That's two shots coming to Batiste. Says two from four, two for four from the free throw line on the day, but really struggled yesterday. Interesting routine at the free throw line. Jenkins checking back in for Roberts. Both free throws good from Batiste. Lead up to four. Minute and a half remaining. Jenkins takes it himself from the top of the key. No good. Rebound to Brown. He sets up from three. Also no good. Clark, another offensive rebound. Seiki gets it to Harvey. Just over a minute remaining now. Brown out to Clark, open for the three. No good, rebound, Banovitz. And the pressure really on now for the Tigers. Down four with 50 seconds left. Carlton with possession. And the ball nearly stolen, but a foul called. And Banovitz will head to the line for two free throws. Yeah, Brian, just before that foul, I was gonna say, just enough time left in this one for the Tigers to play it out, right? Having a defensive stance right here, you need a stop, and then to come back down on the other end of the court and get a basket. Obviously, they head to the free throw line right now. Banovitz hits the first of two. But no matter the result of this free throw, it will remain a two possession game. The Tigers down six here. Tigers get it up the court quickly. Brown trying to find the man in the corner. Clark saves it. Seiki with the three, and it's good. He cuts the lead in half. 
Tigers down just three, 38 seconds remaining. So again, another position where the Tigers, they can play this defensive possession out. So long as they get a stop, they'll have about eight and a half, probably closer to 10 seconds to come back down to the offensive end of the court and hit a three, but it's a lot to ask to both get the defensive stop and get the three. Yeah, it'll certainly be an interesting decision. You almost have to think that with 38 seconds left, you might like your odds getting a couple of more possessions at least if you play the foul game versus just one opportunity to tie things up with the three or no opportunities if Carlton does convert late in the shot clock. I certainly agree with you there, Brian, especially when you consider it allows you to play more aggressively right here. Play for a steal, and if you get called for a foul, then you'll live with it. Force this Knights team to continue to make free throws. They've done a great job in this second half, as we talked about. This half, 14 for 17 from the charity stripe, 82%. Tigers will come out in full court pressure right here. And a lot of length on the court. Abdullah Roberts back out there. Jordan Littman will join him. A.J. Clark. And then that's Tanner Brown. And rounding out the five on the court is Jacob Harvey. The official currently at the scorer's table discussing something. Talking with Coach Jimmy Smith. The official now talking with head coach Guy Calland for Carlton. Now he goes over to let Jimmy Smith know what he was looking at. And the Knights will inbound it. Beck Page running the sideline. Beckler gets it double teamed by Clark and Littman and he is fouled, but the Tigers don't look pleased with that one. Yeah, and we'll see if we'll get a replay of it right here. AJ Clark really tight on the body of Beckler. Beckler ripping through and creating the contact himself. So certainly not a call that we like to see going against the Tigers. First free throw good from Beckler. He's now eight for nine from the line. He's up to 22 points. And that second one is good. Clark gets it to Jenkins to Brown. Brown from three, just off. Banovitz with the rebound and a couple seconds tick off the clock here. And the Knights will be headed back to the free throw line. Foul number five on Enzo Seiki. Got those three fouls early in the first half and has had a hard time staying in the game. When he has been in there, he's been productive. 17 points leading the Tigers just behind Brown's 19. And now Enzo Seiki, the transfer from Colorado Springs, headed to the bench with five fouls. He'll be replaced by Ben Hanley. That one just bounces in for Banovitz. He looked surprised himself that that one stayed in there. But Carlton getting two triple digits, 100 to 94. And now 101 to 94. Tigers running out of time. Clark to Brown with the desperation three. No good rebound, Beckler. And Carlton really feeling it on the bench. They are on the verge of victory here in San Antonio. Knights came in 2-1 and one on the year. Tigers 6-0 and oh, playing at home. But it looks like Carlton 
going to escape San Antonio with a victory, but still 17 seconds left. Beckler having to convert these free throws. He's done a great job thus far, 9 of 10. That one no good, though, front end. Tigers trying to keep some hope. Second one good. Hanley with the inbounds to Clark. But that pass broken up. Hanley over to Brown. Hits that three. Ten and a half seconds left here. Tigers down five. Tigers have had their opportunities with these three-point attempts, just unable to connect on most of them. Yeah, Brian, nonetheless... They find themselves in a position maybe just within reach in this game. It's going to take a lot, almost almost certainly going to need a steal right here and a lot of help, but not entirely impossible. Looks like they'll make some stuff, substitutes. Braxton Berry going to enter the game. Freshman standing at six foot eight, Some great length, perhaps, that they'll put on the ball. But, Brian, something that you talked about early in the game, was the free throw shooting of both sides. You now see that that free throw percentage for this night side has ballooned up over 75%. The Trinity's remained around that 60% mark, about what they've shot on the year, something that you said Coach Jimmy Smith talked about at length, something that the Tigers will need to improve as the year goes along. Right now, they sit at 17 of 28. That's 11 missed free throws that really, really hurt when you're coming down to the wire in a five-point game, in a game that they've already given Carlton some more free-throw opportunities, trying to keep them within reach. Page again gets it to Getz. Ball nearly stolen, but it'll stay with Carlton. Second time we've seen Page get it over to Getz on the baseline. And another timeout called. 9.6 seconds remaining here in San Antonio. This is the final game of the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic. From here, the Tigers begin conference play. They take a trip up to Kerrville and face Shriner on December 4th. They're not completely done with non-conference play, though. After three road games within the conference, they'll be back home here Tuesday, December 21st against Alma and the 22nd against Calvin. So a couple more opportunities to come see this Tiger team in person at Calgar Gym. They're a fun team to watch. You can see all the points they keep putting up. 97 here so far today after 108 yesterday, but trying to... Come back here, Page fouled on the inbounds pass and he'll head to the free throw line. And these free throws, which have been such a feature of these final few minutes, something Coach Smith talked to me about this week, the two things he believes this team needs to improve on the most, turnovers and free throws. And he believes the turnovers come naturally with the, the style of play playing so fast as Paige misses that first one. But the free throws, he doesn't really have an explanation for. Just have to be better from the charity stripe if they want to win these close games as conference comes around. But still alive as Paige missed that first one. Able to connect on the second. Hanley to Levine. Puts up the three. Blocked a little bit there by Page. And just one second remaining. Carlton up by six. Levine into Brown, who puts up the three. Hits it to get the Tigers two triple digits for the second day in a row. But the result goes the way of the Carlton Knights. They come into San Antonio and defeat the undefeated Trinity Tigers, handing them their first loss of the season. A tough loss here for the Tigers. They held a lead of double digits in the first half, but Carlton going on a run to 
bring things close at the half and then just able to fight through this second half, make their free throws, getting their percentage up all the way to 74. They were led by Alex Batiste with 30 points and Jeremy Beckler, 24. Also key contributions from Banovitz and Harris. Banovitz especially making a couple of big threes in key moments. He added 17, Harris had 14. For the Tigers, they were led by Tanner Brown with 25 points and Enzo Seiki with 17. But Seiki and Jenkins both fouling out with five fouls, so really limiting the damage that they could do. Absolutely, Brian. This one hurts, especially when you put up 100 points in a game at this level of competition, you expect to walk away with victory more often than not. But when you give up 35 free throw opportunities to the opposing team like the Tigers did today, and when the opposition shoots better at the free throw line than you, they're more often than not going to walk away with victories in close games. So it's the things we talked about all day today. Shooting better at the free throw line, finding a fine line when it comes to aggression and fouling, trying to force turnovers is obviously something that this Tiger team is going to look to do all year as they get out and run in transition. But being able to sit back, force the opposition to take tough shots and, and get defensive rebounds is something else that they'll need to work on as they move forward. But certainly a learning experience and something to build on as they move forward. Certainly a very fun team to watch and a very fun weekend of basketball we had here in San Antonio. That concludes the Leslie Robinson Thanksgiving Classic. Carlton going 2-0. and oh. They'll head back to Minnesota with a 3-1 and one record. Just six times getting to 100 points for the Tigers since 1992. And they're able to do it in consecutive days. But this one falling just short as Carlton gets out of here with a 103-100 to 100 victory. Thank you so much to all of you for joining us. And thank you to Amaya, Roberto, Jean, and Yanel in the control room and working the cameras, providing this great broadcast for you. Thank you so much to Josh and Ryan for always providing the help to run this incredible broadcast. For Luke Terry, I'm Brian Anselson. Have a wonderful holiday weekend.